Welcome everybody to something completely different for this channel. Uh, I have spoken about this in previous gameplay videos that I have done on this channel about wanting to move into doing something a little bit different. Uh, gaming in my day to day life has become less and less relevant either because games nowadays are not you know, enticing me as much anymore or I just generally have uh, moved away from enjoying gaming as much. Um, but what has taken its place has been films, uh, collecting films, reviewing films, talking about films, watching about watching them on YouTube or anything like that has become a great played a great deal of, uh, of a big role in my life at the at the moment, especially with last year having all of the time in the world with nothing else to do because of you know what reasons and uh, yeah, so. Yeah, I thought we'd go through my collection in different parts. Now, as you can see here, these are the standard kind of Blu-rays that you'd see every now and again. Nothing particularly special, nothing uh, or, uh, especially expensive or rare. But they're the basic uh, crop of my uh, collection. But we will be going through more uh, yeah, unique, more rarer stuff first, released by specific labels. As uh, Yeah, there's certain companies out there that uh, produce uh, films uh, on Blu-ray or 4K that... Yeah, either haven't been released on Blu-ray or 4K before, or you know, are getting uh, the 4K treatment or the Blu-ray treatment to uh, you know replace you know older DVDs or older Blu-rays. Because yeah, Blu-rays have been around for a long while now. I have one from I think 2008, and uh, even though it looks good, there's certainly uh, better-looking Blu-rays out there nowadays from newer films. So uh, yeah. I have uh, films from all sorts of different uh, companies, uh, HMV do a lot of uh, good stuff over here in the UK, uh, a lot of uh, exclusive stuff they sell and uh, a lot of uh, you know like uh, nice collections and uh, box sets and all that, uh, as well as Arrow Video and uh, Eureka and uh, Studio Canal and Second Sight and Arrow Academy as well as Arrow Video, so uh, yeah, they're uh, all really nice but Firstly, I'm going to be going through my uh, Powerhouse collection, or more known as Indicator, as I've, they've not been my main part of my collection for a while. I've had about one film from them before last year, but now they've uh, become bigger and bigger, and uh, yeah, they're uh, one of my favourites at the moment. So uh, yeah, I thought we'd just have a quick look at them first. So uh, the first one is, uh, well, it's car related at least, and it is Christine. I'm sorry if the, uh, you know, the zoom in is a bit too much at the moment. I am only on my phone at the moment, but yeah, that will uh, change eventually. I'll hopefully get a uh, camera or something that's a bit more dedicated. But yeah, this is a uh, great, 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 great film. It's uh, one of John Carpenter's more well-known films, I imagine, especially uh, considering he has done some uh, more, you know, less well-known stuff. But this is part of his great run in the '80s, where he did a lot of superb films. Uh, starting off uh, with uh, you know the likes of The Thing and uh, Escape from New York and then this and then you had uh, They Live later on in the 80s. So uh, yeah, this is a superb film. This isn't the uh, the most up-to-date Blu-ray, I don't think, because yeah, this came out in 2017, as you can see there, 2017. But yeah, it's still a, a great-looking Blu-ray and uh, yeah, a great-looking film as well. And uh, yeah, that car is superb. The uh, Plymouth Fury, which we have used plenty of times on a Forza game. Uh, now we have uh, Blue Collar, starring the great Richard Pryor, the great Harvey Keitel, and the great Yafet Koto, directed by Paul Schrader, as well as written by Paul Schrader, who's probably more well-known for his writing more than his directing, because he also wrote Taxi Driver and... Uh, Raging Bull, uh, but he's also directed some good stuff as well, this being his best, but he also directed a film called Hardcore with George C. Scott, which is also superb, and uh, yeah, he also went on to do uh, First Reform with Ethan Hawke, which was really rather good, so uh, yeah, but this is his best as far as I'm concerned, because it's uh, really rather politically charged, and uh, yeah, it's politically in line with what I believe, and uh, yeah, it's also a uh, really rather thrilling film, highly engrossing and uh, yeah has a superb cast as well so uh, yeah highly recommend this if you've not seen it it's yeah 1978 but it's so it's hardly the newest of films but it's still a really really good one now this one is highly unrated, underrated especially considering who it stars and that is Devil in a Blue Dress starring Denzel Washington now this came around he's, he's 
search to uh, you know stardom really because it came out in 1995 so it's yeah right around the point where he was becoming massive uh, but sadly it wasn't really well received at the time or at least box office wise so uh, yeah which is a great shame but yeah, set in the 1950s, 1940s, I think. And, uh, yeah, it's a uh, neo-noir kind of film. So, you know, lots of, uh, you know, shadows, lots of, uh, you know, intrigue, murder, all of that lot. And, uh, yeah, it's a super film. You can tell it's really rather new as well because it's got the new BBFC uh, rating on it. Because they have changed recently. Because, as you can see by Blue Collar, it used to be like that. But now they are like that. So, uh, yeah, you can always tell when a, uh, a Blu-ray has been newly released. And, uh, yeah, this is a super film. And, uh, yeah, highly recommend it, especially if you're into Denzel Wa uh, Washington yourself. But me, personally, I like it more for that. Uh, more f for it's the way the plot is and how engrossing it is and how well-paced it is. More than just because it has Denzel Washington in it. He's great, but, you know, there's also other great elements to it. Now, we have a trilogy of films here, which are... Uh, most notable for having uh, effects done by Ray Harryhausen, which is who is one of my favourite visual effects artists, who died a few years ago, unfortunately. But he was, yeah, top of his game during the 50s, 60s and 70s, uh, lasting from 1949 till 1981. Last film being Clash of the Titans, which is also a really good film. But this trilogy of films is the Sinbad trilogy, the seventh voyage of Sinbad to start with, released in 1958, as you can see. Not a very long film, but uh, yeah, really, 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 really have a good one as well. Solid start to the trilogy. Then we had Golden Voyage of Sinbad. Took him a while to come out with this one, so it didn't have the same cast or anything like that, but Ray Harryhausen did work on it. So it came out 15 years later in 1973. A bit longer. Some people don't like uh, this one as much as the first one, and I am in that boat. But it's still a really good film, nonetheless. It's a nice adventure film. And then... Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger comes third. Again, some people didn't really like this as much as the previous two, but I still really rather like it. I actually like this more than the second, although not as much as the first. And, uh, yeah, 1977. So, uh, yeah, it took them a while to come out with these films, but a lot of the reason is that it, for that is the way that the visual effects are done. They're basically stop motion, and uh, that takes a hell of a long time to uh, do because you have to move whatever creature or monster that you're showing off inch by inch millimeter by millimeter or whatever and uh, yeah you'll see some more Ray Harryhausen in a minute but we're getting through the single uh, disc versions first and another one is the China Syndrome which is a uh, superb conspiracy thriller from the 70s the 70s where a whole, whole where, where a whole host of conspiracy thrillers came out during that time you had the conversation you had three days of condor the parallax view and uh, yeah but this is probably my favorite of the bunch because it actually came out only a few days maybe a couple of weeks before an actual event that is depicted in this film happened if you've ever heard of the three mile island incident and this is what this film kind of depicts but it happened this came out before that actually happened and uh, yeah it's a bit of a uh, weird uh, coincidence really but does play into the whole conspiracy theory kind of thing as well and uh, yeah I imagine when this came out and then you know the whole uh, incident happened it no doubt made people think maybe they are covering something up and it's got a great cast as well as, as you saw on the front Michael Douglas Jane Fonda and Jack Lemon. so it's a great free uh, you know Prong, pronged attacked with the uh, cast there pretty much like a uh, blue collar was and the final single disc is a uh, special edition version of road games so yeah basically a trucker ends up witnessing a murder or at least suspects that a murderer is on the uh, roads ends up coming across his uh, handiwork in uh, several ways and uh, yeah along with jamie lee curtis post halloween uh, basically try and hunt the killer down and it's a yeah a really really good box set and a uh, great Australian film as well I highly recommend it if you've never seen it before and uh, yeah this box set comes with a great deal of stuff with it uh, it's got the disc as normal then you've got the uh, a booklet which is really nice it's got lots of essays and uh, interviews and pictures to go with it, that's Stacey Keach. He's the uh, main leading man in this. 
And uh, yeah, it also came with a poster, which I'm probably not going to be able to show you off fully because of the way my camera is at the moment. But it comes with the original one on the front. So basically this that you can see here, which is a really, really nice poster, really. Because, yeah, it's a bit sexually evocative, but it also plays into the whole road game kind of theme. And then uh, this poster, which, yeah can't really see but it's done in like a kind of classic 50s style really so yeah I really really do like the poster and it's nice thick paper as well which is always crucial when it comes to uh, posters for me because a lot of posters these days are quite thin and uh, naff in all honesty so let's get on to the first of the box sets and we are coming back to Ray Harryhausen as we have the wonderful worlds of Ray Harryhausen volume 1 1955 to 1960 which has it came from beneath the sea 20 million miles to earth and the free world of Gulliver not a massive fan of the free worlds of Gulliver it's not really my kind of film it's a bit more fantasy a little bit more childlike but it is still a decent film and it does show off the effects really rather nicely uh, but it is the weakest of the three as far as I'm concerned. But this comes in a really nice box showing you off the uh, creature in the uh, It Came Beneath the Sea which is a giant octopus attacking there a car and the Golden Gate Bridge on the top right there and uh, yeah, just more details on the back uh, but yeah, the films are really really good overall to be honest really nice special effects and really nice covers on them as well I know some people don't like these uh, creature features from the 50s because they don't look as great as maybe they think in terms of, you know, CGI and special effects. But, yeah, a lot of work goes into these and you can really see that when you watch it. Especially when you watch something like 20 Million Miles to Earth where they had to, because uh, it attacks a, a brick bridge in uh, Rome, they're microscopic bricks because they have to make the uh, monster itself look huge and... Uh, yeah, they were like an inch wide or something like that, maybe even smaller than that. And uh, yeah, they really did a good job on it. And this is in 1957, so two years from after it came from beneath the sea. And then Three Worlds of Gulliver. You'll probably know this more from the Jack Black version that was made a few years ago. But yeah, it's still a good film. It just doesn't have as strong of a uh, second half as it does a first half. But it's still... Yeah, good, and has some really no, rather nice satire going for it. And finally, it comes with a booklet. There's the uh, monster from the 20 million miles from Earth. And uh, there he is again. And yeah, again, really nice booklet going through it all. There's a really nice bit on in here that tells the story of how they made it came from beneath the sea. I'll find it for you because it's really rather quite funny. Yeah, it's here. There was difficulty... As it says, shooting the scenes on the Golden Gate Bridge, so they had to. Uh, they weren't. They didn't get permission for it basically. So they had to mount the camera in the back of the of a bakery truck and shot through the rear windows. We drove back and forth over the bridge eight or nine times, and we got all of the footage we needed in about four hours. As a toll booth at one end of the bridge, and finally the attendant stopped us and asked, "What the hell are you doing going back and forth every half hour?" I told him, "We keep forgetting things, so we have to go back and get them." So uh, yeah, bit of a uh, shoot the rodeo kind of thing there going on, where they have to, you know, you know, taking all the footage they can. But it's not the kind of footage that is, you know, managed or anything like that. So it's a, a little bit of a, uh, you know, a uh, strange situation when they have to uh, do that without any permission. So, uh, yeah, I imagine they didn't get permission because they're going to get bridge does to get really rather destroyed. But that's a given, really, for those kind of films. And the second box set for Ray Harryhausen is obviously the World of the Worlds of Ray Harryhausen Volume 2, 1961 to 1964, with Mysterious Island, Jason and the Argonauts, and First Men in the Moon. Jason and the Argonauts is one reason why this is so rare, because people bought it by the truckload when it came out. They only made 6,000 of them, as you can see. And I've got 2529. So I actually got to go on eBay and get this and pay way over odds for what it actually was worth but still well worth it and as you can see it's got really nice artwork again like the uh, previous one and uh, yeah nice solid box as usual this actually has the uh, the um, the best of the f best most consistent trilogy out of the uh, other box set 
because even though I'm not a massive fan of the Jason and the Argonauts, it's still a better film than Three Worlds of Gulliver, and then Mysterious Island and First Men in the Moon are really rather good as well, so uh, yeah, so take a look at them, there's Mysterious Island, basically on a balloon and it ends up, you know, crashing down onto this mysterious island, believe it or not, and uh, yeah, there's loads of giant creatures and all that lot, pretty much all normal creatures, but they are giant, so they end up fighting a giant crab at one point, which is really fun. And then Jason and the Argonauts, this is probably the most well-known of uh, Ray Harryhausen's uh, work outside of Clash of the Titans. And uh, yeah, it's a classic really, fighting skeletons and all that lot that are attacking them and it's really good. 1963, and then finally First Men in the Moon, basically 19th century scientist tries to get to the moon and isn't doing it. And uh, yeah, done by H.E. Wells, who obviously did a lot of science fiction back in his uh, back in the day. And yeah, 1964. So uh, yeah, and again, you get a, a nice booklet. There's a skeleton from Jason and the Argonauts. We wish I could find a um, model of that. And there's Ray Harryhausen himself. And again, nice booklet. Lots of pictures. There's Jason and the Argonauts. Is there any skeletons in here? That's where I saw one at some point. Maybe not. Yeah, there, there we go. There's a skeleton. Grr. Nasty face on him. Uh, but yeah, I love Ray Harryhausen films. There's only two I don't have at the moment. Um, One Million Years BC and uh, Earth vs. the Flying Saucers. Earth vs. the Flying Saucers does have a Blu-ray out, but it's ancient and I doubt it'd look any better really on uh, than over a DVD, quite frankly. I'm not paying extra for a Blu-ray that doesn't look much better. So uh, yeah, but hopefully they will release those. Will they release Earth vs. the Flying Saucers? I'm going to get the other one eventually, but it's quite dear at the moment. And second and third box set is William Castle at Columbia, Volume 1, with The Tingler, starring the great Vincent Price, 13 Ghosts, Mr. Sardonicus, and Homicidal. All four of these are great. I really, really do like them. They're a little bit cheesy at times, uh, like, you know, you'd expect from my older horror films. But yeah, still really, really good, and uh, yeah... Really a ghoulish voice, uh, guy on the front there, and there's William Castle, and uh, yeah, these went out of print fairly quickly. But luckily, I was getting into William Castle right at the time when the uh, started to go out of print. And in all honesty, I only bought this because I really liked the Tingler with Vincent Price, as I am a massive Vincent Price fan. I have a load of his films, as you'll see when we go through my collection in other videos. But yeah, this is the first one you'll see. You'll see from my collection with him, and uh, yeah. Really, really fun film. William Castle was known for doing his uh, gimmicks in cinemas. So, uh, yeah, it says there on the uh, front, Percepto. So, basically, they put a, li a li little electronic buzzer or in the seats and people would feel the tingler when it went off at certain points. And, uh, yeah, frightened plenty of people. Then, 13 Ghosts. Most people will probably know this for the remake that came out in, like, 2001. Uh, part of Dark Castle Productions, which were trying to remake a lot of uh, uh, William Castle films. They also did House on Haunted Hill in 1999. But yeah, they're, they're the only two they did because it went all that great, really. So uh, yeah, which is a shame because these films are ripe for, uh, you know, remakes. And uh, yeah, these had Illusiono, so basically you wore glasses and uh, in the uh, hope of seeing ghosts. And yeah, 1960. So yeah, again, another really good film. And then Homicidal, again with a gimmick, called the Special Fright Break. So for those too timid to take the climax, we were welcome to the Coward's Corner. And when a coward did end up walking out of the cinema, they ended up having a light shone on them as they walked out. And uh, yeah, everybody laughed at them and booed them and everything like that, and it was really rather quite funny. So uh, yeah, pretty good film again. Kind of inspired... Um, the likes of Psycho, to be honest. Or was inspired by the likes of Psycho, should I say. And then finally, Mr. Sardonicus. Which came with a uh, punishment poll to show Mr. Sardonicus mercy or no mercy. And it gl they glue in the dark, so uh, yeah, everybody could see who was voting for what. And then, uh, obviously, they didn't have any different versions of the film. That's just a myth, really, but yeah. Still, again, a good, another good film. The fact that it came out with... 
Homicidal and Mr. Sardonicus in 1961, 13 goals in 1960, and then uh, the Tingler a couple of years before that is really rather remarkable considering how good the quality is on all of them. And obviously, they weren't the only films he was making. He did uh, House on Haunted Hill in 1959 as well. Also, starring uh, the great v uh, Vincent Price. And finally, we've got the uh, Sam Fuller at Columbia collection f between 1937 and 1961, with It Happened in Hollywood, Adventure in Sahara, Power of the Press, Shotproof, Scandal Street, The Crimson Kimono, and Underworld USA. Now, these first two aren't particularly brilliant. Uh, they're just a little bit meh really I don't really get what they're trying to go for but Power of the Press is rather decent it's uh, especially uh, relevant nowadays with the Power of the Press be it or not and then Shotproof, Scandal Street and Queens of Kimono and Only World USA are all brilliant so uh, yeah it's not a bad collection at all considering how many films there are there's six after all so uh, no seven yeah so even if two of them are a little weak they're not awful or anything but they are definitely the weaker of the lot it's you know still a really good collection even for just for five films so uh, yeah and then you got two guys beating someone up I think that's Underworld USA that's depicting and then Fuller on the side and then all of the films there this makes this collection alone makes Samuel Fuller one of my most you know bought directors so uh, yeah there is that so yeah one case comes with uh, two of the cases come with two films each and then the other two are separate so this one has oh no this has three even sorry it happened in Hollywood Adventure in Sarara and Power of the Press I think it's because they're all quite short yeah as you can see here it happened in Hollywood is 68 minutes long, Adventure in Sahara is 57 minutes long, and Power of the Press is 64. Maybe the length is one reason why I don't like the uh, first two as much, because, yeah, they don't really get the chance to do much, whereas at least Power of the Press has something to say, even if it is quite short. So, yeah. Still, I enjoy having them. I wouldn't have these if I didn't like them. Like some films, which I do plan on getting rid of at some point. And then Shockproof and Scandal Street. These are the t two of the better ones out of the uh, collection. Again, these are at least lengthy, hour 20 and hour 22, so that you actually do have time to, you know, make the story interesting. Unlike the other three there. And then finally, we have the other two. We have Crimson Kimono, which was actually billed as the first interracial kiss on film, which was a big deal back then, believe it or not. Because, yeah, even in 1959, there was a lot of racism. And, uh, yeah, Samuel Fuller really uh, pulled it out of the park by doing such a thing, quite frankly. And it seems even more of a big case when you consider that it's a Japanese uh, man that is being... He's kissing a white woman, considering how vilified the Japanese were after World War Two. And then, finally, Underworld USA, which is probably my favourite of the uh, collection. I love the cover with all of the stuff spiking up and down and then... Yeah, it is a New World USA, which is on the box set. A woman basically sees someone get murdered or beaten up, at least. And, uh, yeah. It's the longest of the uh, lot, I think. Yeah, 99 minutes. The other ones are an hour 20, or hour 22, and then all an hour long. And, uh, yeah, it's a really good collection. There's no booklet like in uh, the uh, Ray Harryhausen one, but that's because you've got four cases there to... Uh, pack into one box so that's why but yeah they all come with booklets inside them as you can see so they've all got stuff inside that you can read if you so wish but yeah it's a great indicator really really knocking out of the park at the moment they've got even more coming out at some point I do want at least one film from the uh, second volume to the second volume of the William Castle lot but they don't release them separately until the box set itself is out of print and because yeah the four films in there aren't as popular as the four films in the, this box set and they've taken a while to sell out but there is at least one in there that I really really like and it's called Straight Jacket so hopefully I'll get my hands on that at some point but I have no interest in seeing the other three films as they do not sound like the kind of thing I like and uh, yeah nowhere near as critically acclaimed as Straight Jacket was so uh, yeah bit of a long video to start off this uh, collection view with but it's probably going to get longer considering how many films I actually have you can just see by just what you can see here in terms of Blu-rays or standard Blu-rays that I have a lot but yeah 
I really do like collecting. I wish more people did it because it, you know, gives more films that might not well ever get put on stream in the uh, chance to see the light of day. And that's why I really, really like companies like Indicator and uh, Arrow for doing the things that they do because it, yeah, really does give films a chance to uh, have a second life. And, uh, yeah, most of the films I own are not on Netflix, for instance. Of all of the 502 I own, for instance, only 23 are on Netflix in the UK. So, yeah, it's really rather poor showing on Netflix part. But, yeah, that's just the way it goes. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this bit of a different video on this channel. Uh, and, uh, yeah, if you uh, like what you've seen or have any questions about the films I've shown, then, uh, yeah, put a comment down below. And, uh, yeah, I'll happily answer you. And uh, if you have any recommendations for films uh, from Indicator, then I'd uh, happily take them. Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.